If you are a parent, single, married, or otherwise, you know how critical it is to protect your children from harm. There's lots of different types of harm. We're going to talk about protecting your children from one kind of harm right now. We have raised five sons from birth onward. This is Liz, my wife, and uh, no daughters, just boys. And the question is how to protect your children from harm. It's a fairly broad question, and there's so many ways that we could answer this, so we'll tackle a few of them today. Specifically, we're gonna talk about kind of um, the harm f that they can do to themselves. Well, for me, one thing I've noticed how I've changed, like with my youngest child, he's 16, no Facebook, no Instagram. I think... So you're saying social media? Yeah, there's no social media. So what is that protecting him from? I just think from a lot of anxiety, a lot of friend yes. issues, I think just comparison issues, and so, and wasting time. So with this child, now I didn't do this with the others, but I just think it causes well, so much anxiety and yeah. things like that. I just said absolutely no social media. And luckily he's a pretty easygoing kid and he And he's quite social anyway. And maybe it he is said, because okay, he's yeah. okay with that rule. He likes to I mean he 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 does enjoy video games, which has its own sort of sociality going on there, especially if you're online and you're talking to friends. Or there, in many cases, and this is something that we wanted to talk about, and we've mentioned it before, is we try to have our house be sort of the center of their social world. Obviously, school normally is, but when you get into summer months and even after school, where do they hang out? You know, where do they congregate? And you know, are we the kind of the parents that encourage them to set their phones down and their electronic devices and just play or talk or listen to music or dance because a lot of times we'll catch him in here dancing with his friends right. even without girls you know they they dance around wildly but anything like that especially if it's kind of under our supervision is a great way to keep them from harm now one thing that you've done uh, that was a rule that I never really adhered to when I was a kid but something that you feel strongly about is sleepovers oh I don't like those she doesn't like them if you look at the rates of kids, sexual abuse, things like that with sleepovers, it's really high. And just things, you don't need, why let sleepovers? Now, having said that, I know. I just don't like it. But it was also, this has also been a transition. I mean, the early, the early boys, the, the oldest boys, I mean, they went through the phase where it was absolutely not under no circumstances. And then after a little bit of input from me, if we know these kids that are yeah, over, we vetted like their friendship, we understand, we know them, we know their parents, we've been around with them it long enough. It doesn't matter. You don't really know. I agree. No, that's true. But still, having said that, you must admit, we've let the frequency of sleepovers over the last couple of boys has increased. A right, lot of that's due to convenience. now, there's none. Because you're 16. Why would you need to sleep over at your friend's house? Okay, but can I go back to Facebook and stuff? And yes. parents may say, you can. how do you stop your kid from getting Instagram and Facebook? What you do, like my son's 16, but according to AT&T, they think he's 10 years old. So every app he gets, it Why has... Oh, because you've said it that way? Yes. So every app he gets, I have to approve. approve he can't do anything. So that's how I know he doesn't well, have Facebook, Instagram, or any other app I don't want him to have. And really, it's only in the last six months that he finally got a smartphone that no, has apps. No, he got a smartphone start of sophomore year. When he started student government, long? yes. Right, whatever. So it's been a year. It's been, one, it's been one year. It's the start of his junior year right now. Okay. So I'm just saying, he's only had a... My point is, is he didn't have a smartphone starting at the age of two. Um, you know, it was, it was finally something that he could get when he really needed it in high school for some of his extracurricular activities. Otherwise, it was a flip phone with none of the functionality of a smartphone. No apps, no Yeah, Snapchat. it wasn't flip phones great when they could do it. All right, what else are we talking about? Um, another... Thing we've done to protect our kids just I mean you know they're all horny teenagers so we have said you can't lay down with girls you can't share a blanket right, I, let me do this part because these are mine okay so house because you're a boy and you know what they're thinking well right house rules okay a you don't date till you're 16 when you do date when you're 16 a lot of people will say go on group dates we think that's fine but we also encourage you to 
pair off and go on a single date now and then. Or you can have a girl over alone. That's fine. We allow that. That's still a date. You know, for a while there, they were getting away with having girls over and watching movies. And they'd say, well, we're not on a date. Yeah, but you're sitting there holding hands, you know, and you're watching a movie and you're not 16. Well, anyway, once they're 16 or before, however, now that they're 16, it's all good. But uh, if you're with a girl, you are not in the dark. You are not, as she mentioned, laying down. You both, all four feet are on the floor wherever you are. And most critically, you're not sharing a blanket, you know, where your hands are under the blanket and you're snuggled up together. It's interesting in this, this generation of kids, they snuggle a lot. You know, they don't date, they don't necessarily pair off as boyfriend and girlfriend, but they just say we're friends, but we have, but we snuggle, you know, and we hold each other's and we snuggle. And it's like, you know, I think I'd rather have you kissing and like, you know, like I wouldn't say making out, but I would say I'd rather have you kiss than snuggle. Because if you're kissing, it's just this area. But snuggling, there's a whole body snuggle going on. And we try and to keep that. It's true, they can do things wherever. But in our home, we try to have exactly. certain rules. They know our expectations, whether they fall. And another thing, like we have them turn in their phones at night. 10 p.m., we have everybody's cell phone. Yeah. Well, that's a fairly, that's slightly newer, isn't it? We no, haven't been doing we that did forever. That. See, but you learn. But you also depends on the person because some people have their phones and if they don't, then things get hard. But you also learn with having older kids. Yeah, they don't, it's... they're going to be on their phones all night long. They're not going to sleep. Yeah. Take them. Um, that's so, what we've done. Not that that's right or wrong, but that's the, and, the, and those are kind of, again, kind of talking about kids of a certain age, you know, mostly teenage kids. Protecting them from harm, harm from themselves, harm from others in an emotional, physical, sexual way. You know, we try to do have in-house rules. And we encourage, as she mentioned, outside of the house that you treat women with respect and don't objectify and, you know, they're not your toys to play with. And, you know, we really have been very lucky because when we tell people that we've raised five sons, they immediately go, oh, oh, oh. And we go, what? Well, your house must be in shambles. How many, you know, unwed mothers are out there? You know, or whatever it is. The drinking, the gambling, the whoring, you know. <laughs> and it's like, you know, while there are none of them perfect and not all of them have necessarily followed our choice of faith path, they're all really good men. Men. Yeah. Good boys or men. They have, they have standards. They're, they care for people. They're compassionate and... By and large, they are respectful of, of women and uh, treat them well, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I would agree. And no well, and they're all mothers. respectful of me, which I appreciate. They're all very sweet to me. And by the way, you look fetching in that blue. I, it's, I, tell me, Nate, I mean, that's a very pretty woman right there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. Maybe that's just my opinion. But anyway, yeah, take care of your kids. They're your jewels. You have a quiver full of them. <laughs> Okay, we can end with a laugh, all right. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us. Really, it's an honor to talk to you, at you, through you, and for you. If any of this makes sense or is useful to you in your life and your family life, please let us know. Give us a big thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. Talk to you next time.